like Michael mentioned, um, yeah, we've got a lot of fun stuff happening and new things coming online. Uh, like JavaScript, uh, we want to be as accessible to a lot of people as possible. Um, Josh uh, works for Level 7, he reached out, Josh Schramm there, hanging out, uh, and offered up some hosting and some things which work out really well um, to help kind of spread that around, give us some more consistency and provide just a great way for people to learn about different places around Cleveland and some other cool places to look at. As always, we're looking for uh, people to present and present their ideas. We love to learn. That's why we're all here to figure out what you know, what, what everyone's doing, and learn more about JavaScript, and figure out you know how people are using it to solve problems. So, if you're interested in talking, please uh, approach Michael or I on any topic, or if you're familiar with the meetup pages, go ahead and post that. Um, next month, on February 17th, uh, we're meeting over at Level Seven. I just posted that meetup. Um, and we'll be going over some testing frameworks and how to apply testing to your JavaScript. And then I also wanted to take an opportunity and I thought it'd be fun to discuss some hot items in JavaScript over the past few weeks, month, different things going on, and just kind of some JavaScript tidbits, which I thought would be a fun way to open up and get some discussion going. So um, on the meetup board, there's actually a discussion page. So if you go over to the discussions tab, you'll see there's a couple forums. And so I'm just going to go ahead and start uh, keeping a running thread of kind of the JavaScript tidbits that I'll open up with here so you can always have links to go back and look through things. So some interesting things. Um, so Node.js. Um, anybody using Node.js currently? So NCAM counts. I mean, I'm sure a lot of us maybe are actually using a little bit in development. We're using uh, JSLint or you know Grunt or things like that. But so version numbers with Node.js, I found this really interesting. So the version numbers, the even numbers, are their stable releases and the odd number releases. So like 9.x is an unstable release that has changes going into it directly from the master branch on GitHub. But you know the 8 release, the 10 release, the 12 release when it comes up are unstable releases. I find that fairly interesting. That's kind of how you navigate the releases. So if you're running like a 9.x release in production, you probably didn't want to do that. Um, another interesting thing, uh, recently a uh, gentleman named uh, Reginald, uh, what's his name, uh, Brandt White, he, uh, an awesome JavaScript guy, he published a couple of cool books for free that you can get. Um, he had a recent blog post, Prototypes Not Classes, and it's a really good blog post that goes over the difference between prototypes and classes. It covers very much like what a class is, it talks about how JavaScript prototypes work and how to go ahead and create some of those prototypes. And uh, there was another one interesting about uh, how the new operation works in JavaScript. A lot of people may use new or they say I use prototypes. This, is, this post here by a gentleman describes really much more in depth or just at a high level how new works and how it's a little bit of syntactic sugar for creating a new prototype. A couple of other things, so there was a great blog post coming out of O'Reilly on keeping jQuery in check. So how to build your JavaScript and put it in a way so it doesn't invade the DOM as much and create much more um, robust and concise JavaScript apps and using jQuery more as uh, sprinkling on that. Um, also, if people weren't aware, somebody had posted it in the meetup. But ng-conf happened, uh, I believe, two weeks ago, which is an Angular conference out in Utah that they, it was in Utah? Salt Lake City. Salt Lake City, yes. Um, that they had hosted out there. Um, all their videos are available um, on YouTube, so I posted a link for all the videos. Those are available here. So all the videos from ng-conf. Um, there was also recently a launch site called JS, uh, JavaScript the Right Way, which is really interesting because it provides um, a guide to a lot of JavaScript resources that are out there and available, which was really cool because they started out with a choose your path here, and there's things such as, you know, good parts, describe some of the good parts along with blog posts towards JavaScript, patterns, so some of the design patterns in JavaScript, a listing of testing tools and who they were created by, different frameworks, jQuery, Backbone, Ember, Knockout, Angular, Cappuccino, UE, Zepto, Dojo, some different game engines, some good reading, um, some great articles here, one by Yahoo the Cat, Understanding Prototypes in JavaScript. This is a great JavaScript resource that just came online recently. It's called JavaScript the Right Way. Um, 
which you can find all these links again on the message board. And then a lot sometimes people, I'm not sure what people do most of their JavaScript work in, if they work, are working in Visual Studio, Vim, Sublime. But people probably feel some of the pains of, you know, how do you know your JavaScript syntax is correct? How do you know, you know, that you're using a global or using a variable you forgot to declare? How do you know you have undeclared variables and stuff in your JavaScript? And there's an awesome tool called JS Hint, which is the less opinionated uh, version of JS Hint. Um, and JS Lint provides you the ability to go ahead and um, it, it will go take care of highlighting your syntax for you and managing your JavaScript files. So if I were to open up uh, Vim, and the edit, and edit a JavaScript file, you'll see if I, use, if I go ahead here and declare I, what you get is, sorry, that was, it was kind of impromptu and I had no good examples, so I'll be honest. But what it does, it allows you to, um, it will go ahead and let you know that you're using a variable that you did not declare first. Oops. Um, if you look here, um, what it will do is it will let you know that in the case that I used here, I didn't include a bear in front of I, which that's really small. But what you'll see is it comes down here and tells me I is not defined. So it's a nice way that you can identify where you're missing bear. Where, so you've got a global variable leak where you can define a function that's um, unused, things like that. So JS Lint is a great tool. It integrates directly into Visual Studio. If you're using Visual Studio, it's got Sublime text support, and it has um, uh, Vim support as well. So it's a great tool to use to help sanity check your JavaScript, make sure you've got good syntax, things are happy. So that's uh, the last item I have here. Those are all on the Meetup site. So what we got? Um, I think pizza's here. Yeah. And I don't know if we have any pizza. And Jim, ready? Uh, yeah, while you're setting up, if anybody wants to start, there is a mysterious pizza. There's a taco pizza in there somewhere.